finally diving into the whole breakdown of some dubstep visuals. So for those that have been super, super curious, I'm about to leak all of the cheat codes that I know of so far and kind of recreate what I did in the previous breakdown video. But we're gonna take our time here. We're gonna take our time and just walk each step together. So hang on tight and let's right, right on it. Okay fam, so the first things first, per usual, if you've seen any of my tutorials, you're gonna wanna press A select all press x delete then let's go ahead and make sure that our render engine is set up for eevee turn on ambient occlusion bloom screen space reflections we'll see if we need motion blur later on but for now we won't uh, open up edit go into preferences within your animation you want to go ahead and make sure your default interpolation is set up to linear linear is just the way we're going to make things kind of loop I figured let's set that up for now but I don't know how much it may actually come together okay so first things first what we're gonna gonna need uh, here is click this plus do video editing and the first thing that we're gonna need is a song so I went ahead and grabbed this song before the video but personally um, for my dubstep fans and whatnot you're gonna want to make sure you get a song with some pretty strong kicks to do something um, so you can see the waveforms for this first kind of tutorial kind of vibe you don't want a song that's too complicated that has just a lot of like things going on it's kind of hard to tell what things aren't so I recommend looking up uh, rhythm here we go I have a track uh, from an EP preview so I'm just gonna go ahead and pull that The second thing is you're going to need a model. So I pulled some models from this uh, website. They have this thing where they scan pretty much all of these like museum pieces. I think they're really cool and they're really neat to use. Okay, so after you get your model and you get your music, let's go ahead and put our music in to just get us started here. So in your video editing tab, if you don't have that, you just click the plus. Let's click add sound I'm gonna grab this dubstep tutorial add the sound strip display your waveform and at this point let's keep it really simple and let's just find the part of the song that we want to use so I recommend getting a little bit of the drop just so you can do some fun stuff uh, if you're into it All right, so I got a part where it's pretty dope. Um, the best thing, the way I kind of clean things up is I'll just press K to cut and then get to go to the end. Press K again to cut again. That way I just have a cleaner kind of, I think you can actually, so you right click, you can fade in and out as well. So you get a nice like, if you want to loop it, you can, if you don't need to. Okay, so we have, the, we have the music. Let's go back, let's just save our file. We're gonna do a few things to get us started. Now let's import, let's focus on importing our model. Import, should be STL. Let's go ahead and just bring that in. It's gonna be really big probably, yep, that was right. Super gigantic, cause it's like a big old 3D scan. So what I like to do with my models is I'll select object set origin origin and geometry just so we can get it smack dab centered and then let's scale it a little bit and let's just bring it over to pretty much zero bring it down you might need to play around to just get it at the right spot depending on what model you use i'll link all this stuff for you guys just so you don't have to go searching for the right thing or whatnot Press R. I'm just gonna rotate my stuff just so we have nice clean. Let's go front. No, I guess this is on my right. Okay. Once you have your model in here, what we're gonna do is we're just gonna set up the camera just so we know what we have to animate and we don't know what we don't have to animate. So save the file again. 
shift a camera okay okay looks like it's actually gigantic right click down here vertical split hold tilde view camera bring this up let's make this a bit smaller you always kind of want these things to be a bit smaller just um, to save yourself a bit of soul for rendering time because things will get really hectic let's just set it up for Instagram while we're here so I like to give it 1080 by uh, I'll set it up for TikTok 1080 by 1920 just do it you know TikTok is the wave at this point your camera let's just go into viewport display turn this up a little bit composition guides centered this way we can kind of just center our composition that is let's make sure our big boy is right smack that in the middle we can make them a little bit bigger by just dragging the camera and this is okay for right now so once you have your little camera set up now we can really start playing i think the most difficult thing for most people is just getting just getting started so let's from this point let's bring in a plane by pressing shift a let's drag it away so it's g and x it might be different for you it really all depends on i would say at this point if you're not too familiar with movement in blender you might want to go and drop into like uh, tutorial just to see how to move things around. I'm not really going to focus too much on that here. So I'm just going to rotate on the y axis. Now, if somebody wants a very like piece by piece, small micro course kind of thing with this, I'm actually kind of down to get that started. So we scaled that with S. And what I did was from here, you go into your modifier, which is that blue wrench, and you open up wireframe. Uh, you need to subdivide it. So you press tab, right click, subdivide, and you subdivide it a few times. You want to subdivide it. Uh, let's actually make ours a bit smaller than my previous one, just because I think it might give a cooler kind of effect, honestly. And you can reduce the thickness, and you get like this cool kind of grid in the background. Okay. Now we have our plane, so I'm just gonna call this grid. I'm gonna call this model. So we have those two things set up. Um, at this point, we're gonna be playing a lot with some materials uh, and keyframing. So I'm gonna say let's go into our shading our shading tab to keep things simple for everyone here um go into your shading and let's trigger rendered let's click our grid let's make sure our render is set to zero strength let's click our grid let's call it grid and what i'm going to teach you is how to gl make it glow shift a mission connect that emission to your material output and bring it up a little bit I'm gonna make mine this time I'm gonna make it like green like Cyclops green or some shit or blue maybe yeah, blue might be kind of cool huh? I haven't done one in blue in a while so you're gonna set it up you can do material previews just so you can kind of see a bit more um, now what we're gonna do is do another horizontal split there's a bit more space here. I'm going to play with the timeline. Click this little uh, left hand corner. Go into. Mm. Let's go into timeline. And let's also do it, do it again. And then this time let's do the video sequencer honestly you don't really need to see what's going on that much in your model at this point you just need to see the lights oh, okay 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 so you'll see your kicks in the with my song there's a bit of some 
I want the lights to flash. And if you guessed it, what we're going to be doing is we're going to be turning it off and turning it on. That's the first part. So I'm just going to quickly play it. So that's right in between these two kicks. So it's like, I want it all here. So I'm going to show you a little cheat code what I do. So if we made this uh, 120 for right now, let's see what 100 looks like. 50 maybe. I don't know if I want this to be. One thing you want to pay attention to is just how bright that is. I think 50 would be good. It's all up to your selection. Okay. 50, I'm going to keep it simple. Press I to keyframe. And then let's move it one frame. And let's make it zero. I again, keyframe. Move to the next frame. 50. Press I again. So now you'll see it's, it's going to be flickering. So if you click this object, you'll see we have our flicker. What I do here is just move it from frame by frame, copy, paste. So let's see. So 50, 0, 50, 0, 50, 0. So just copy, paste, 50, 0, 50, 0. And just pay attention to those, the audio wavelengths here. Okay, so I think we have it right about now. So let's go back into our layout, just quickly check. Okay, we can make it a bit longer. I'm about to fucking. Here. and then it's gonna we can just like change the hue to something maybe we go back to that green that we liked now make sure that this one's set to zero make this one 50 and that's the end so let's go back to our little thing <laughs> that we have set up so you can see so we need to make sure that the character is there so what I do now at this point is I'm gonna bring in some lights really simple honestly so let's bring in some area lights and let's make them a bit bigger than our usual area lights and let's let's tune them up oh I like that actually maybe what I'll do is just bring this light rotate it on its side. I've been really kind of vibing with this kind of setup. So RX. Maybe we'll give one of our highlights like a bit more of like a, a bluer kind of hue. One. Then we'll bring one. You can kind of give him bring it a little bit lower and let's bring that maybe we can make that like a third color and then see we now we have them kind of lit up what I want to do now is let's go back into our shading and we want to make them a bit more reflective so um, let's make it a little bit smaller here click new you know what, let me actually go to a different view just so I can cut you guys some more slack here. Horizontal split, shading editor. Okay. I'm gonna call this my big guy. The big guy. And we're gonna bring down the roughness. I'm gonna make them kind of metallic a bit. So now we got them like looking kind of juicy if I do say so myself. But not too juicy. If it's too juicy, just get too much on. Then we can play with its color. 
You want them to look a bit more blue. I kind of dig this like lightish bluish. And I'm not going to dive too deep into like materials and stuff at this point. But one thing you notice he has like a little bit of like a socket for an eyeball. I want to play around with that for our light. And you can do that with this model. So let's do shift A and let's bring in a UV sphere. And we're gonna scale it down and give this man an eyeball. So let's just bring him up. CX. Kind of hard to see. Okay. Shade it smooth. And then what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna take the material of the grid. So we have the cool part now is since we're just borrowing the material and we key from the material. Now, our fun guy here. What the fuck it? When that flashes, his fucking eyes start flashing. Too. So. What the fuck it? Now we have a cool little eyeball <laughs> for our big guy here. The other things I want to start dropping in is the camera movement. And you notice there's a bit of like, it's kind of looking kind of flat besides the and all that cool stuff. We need to bring in some camera movement here. Let's go back to our shading just so we can see. So you want to want to look at those points where it's like boom, that is big kicks. Let's go ahead and just actually transition this into, we're going to be doing a bit of blender jumping around. So let's make that one a camera view. Let me get rendered. And let's go ahead and open up this location. Make sure we have our camera selected. And we're gonna turn this into a graph editor. So what we're gonna do here is I'm gonna play the song again. We're gonna be listening to the song a lot through this tutorial. Right about there, we're gonna wanna boom. So what we're gonna do to do that is we're going to keyframe a few things. So let's pay attention to which one is our back and forth. For us, it's the X value. So I'm going to keyframe that. X location, we don't need to see these other two. And I'm going to keyframe it. And then we're just going to go ahead and boom, right about there, I think, is the kick. So we're going to bring them in. Keyframe that. Then let's go ahead and... Uh, let's actually see our timeline view. I'm gonna go ahead and so it looks like four frames. Keep coming back. So now you have a. It's like a. We have that kick. The big issue that we're gonna need here. As you see right now, it's like a bit stale, a bit linear. Right click. Okay, go bounce back. So when the set up to back. And then what I also like to do is turn on my Bezier curves. Oh fuck. Uh, let's leave it at back actually. Sometimes I feel like you might need a Let's copy and paste it every time we hear that kick. Went ahead and keyframed all those like very simple uh, camera animations. The one thing that we want to also do here is it's looking a bit stagnant. Sometimes you want to make the object kind of feel or the camera feel a little bit more handheld. Um, what I do is I'll uh, make sure. So let's pay attention to which location we have here. Which one is up and down? It's our Z axis. So with our Z axis. 
let's go ahead and bring in our modifiers. So you're gonna select your Z location, press N if it's hidden, click modifiers. This is all out on our graph editor. If you don't see it, you're probably on timeline. Click add modifier, noise. Okay. So now what you'll see within our Z axis, it's fucking shaking. <laughs> we don't want it to shake that much. So what you're gonna do, I kind of like that, like shaking at the start. So, so what you can actually do, which I found out is a really cool kind of thing, you can restrict your frame range. I'm gonna restrict it from zero to thirty, and that way I have a. And what I'm gonna do is create another noise modifier on top of that, and I'm gonna restrict this one. To now, <laughs> we're getting into some pretty advanced stuff here, but everyone wants to see some tricks, so there's gonna be a lot of tricks of the trade in this one. I'm gonna try my best to just chop them out for everyone. So, what I'm gonna do with my second noise modifier is I'm just gonna make it, I'm gonna up the scale, I'm gonna up the strength. This way, oh, let's turn down the strength a little bit. I might need to play around with this. Okay, so we have a bit of like something shaking at the start. A few more things I'm gonna add. Now we're getting into the nitty gritty details. So this is like chapter one of this is done. The second part now is a bit of like some particles, some, some things flying in the air, you know. So the big you bring particles in is you open up a plane, another plane here. And then let's make it a bit bigger. Right about. about there, we're going to rotate on the x-axis, I'm going to call this my particle object. I'm actually going to duplicate this by pressing shift D, and I'm going to call this my particle, I'm going to call it my particle uh, falling object 2, I'm going to keep this symbol actually, I'm going to subdivide it once. I'm gonna hold, I'm just gonna bring it in a few points by pressing tab. Okay. And then what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna go ahead and um, make a new material. I'm gonna call this my falling ember. And I'm gonna make that falling ember an admission. And make it blue. Make it kind of bright. Let's just check it. Okay. And then let's go back to our particle object. Click this little like particle kind of thing. And let's turn the number to. I'm just gonna do a few things. Frame start. I'm gonna make it negative 300. End 250. Lifetime 999. And what you'll see here is now we have a bit of some particles falling. So we're gonna do a few more things here. Um, let's just make sure, turn on the rotation. I'm going to turn on render, uh, render as object. And then we're gonna make this a particle falling object. And we'll deal with that color later. Disable show emitter. Uh, viewport display, disable show emitter again. Field weights, turn off gravity all the way. And the next thing we're going to do is we are going to press shift A once again, bring in a force field, and that force field is going to be wind. Now you're going to pull that wind up, move it to the side. I'm going to rotate it. I'm going to rotate it towards our object. And with the wind, I'm going to turn down the strength a little bit. Or turn it up actually, around two or so. And then what we can do, let's just move that up a little bit. Let's make this a tiny bit. And we 
might need to click our emitter once again in our particle object. Sometimes you need to do this just so you can fucking see. Let's make it a tad bit bigger. Bring this a bit down here. Let's go back to the start of our. Let's go ahead and turn up our wind by a lot. So at this point, we have our particle emitter. We have our we have our flavorful fan. We have our object, and we have our camera. Boom, boom, moving in. I think this is fine. So those falling objects are fine for right now. Let's go ahead and bring in another camera so we have camera i'm gonna call this camera one main and what i want to do is i want to bring in a second camera so let's, let's go ahead and make sure we're looking towards that camera i'm gonna call this camera two so the way you switch cameras in this program is you'll go click scene camera two now we'll see a bit more here. Uh, let me see what it looks like if it's like orthographic. It's looking big, hey. So what you can do with orthographic is actually kind of cool. cool. So what I want to do here is I want to key in one of the cameras and I want to do is like, I'm about to fucking lose it. And it's like looking up close at this big boy. So what I want to do is get the starting kind of frame. So the way I did that was I pressed shift and tilde. And what you would do is click this record button and it will auto keyframe. So, so camera two. Oops. And let's just go ahead and And right there we have this like kind of vibe where now it's gonna be um Now we have a bit of a recorded. Let me turn that off. And if we turn that off. And what we can do, I saw this in a YouTube video. So a graph editor, right click. Oh, I believe it's like. Uh, smooth keys plain keyframes in so So what you're going to do 
is within the timeline, you're going to press M to bring in a marker. And then when you do bind camera to markers, you'll bind a new camera. Oopsie daisy. I meant to bind the second camera. So you bind the second camera to the marker. And what we're going to do is we're going to input another marker right here. And then we're going to select our first one. And then we're going to bind. Uh, we might want to move this one a bit further up. Then we'll go ahead and insert a marker here. Marker, bind camera. So now you have. And that's a pretty generic kind of vibe we have going here. So this was a really long tutorial. It's 43 minutes so far. And we have a bit of a close up, and it's like, and it's shaking, it's shaking, it's moving. Um, the second portion I want to do is really quickly, it's some compositing. So let's just, so let's handle this real quick. First things first, you need to make sure your render settings are set up perfectly. So switch the file format to FFmpeg video, go to encoding, switch that to MPEG 4. Especially lossless, hit this folder option. Uh, export one dot mp4, and then bring in a viewer by pressing Shift A. What that was was a reroute. You can do Shift A reroute and bring that in as well. And I'm gonna click F12 so I can just render out a still image. And with this one. Oops, lens distortion is a huge fucking play when it comes down to these like uh, dubstep kind of effects. So you press V, you'll see we get a bit of this like cool lens distortion kind of going on here. What I like to do sometimes too is just play with uh, RGB curves if you want to just like fancy cleaning it up a little bit, you know. So now it's looking a bit nicer. So I press F12 again. You see, we have something kind of cool going on here. Okay. And then when you're done rendering, when you're done setting this up, you press Control F12 and you click Render Animation. And everything will be pretty much good to go. So I'm going to add some more things, but I want to leave you guys with just pretty much this information here. So to tie it all up, I know this was a lot. We sat through this all together. One, bring in a nice little wireframe, keyframe that emission to the beep. Two, you bring in your, your nice model here. Um, and then you do a bit of camera animating, going in and out, and then you have it coming up close. You bring in some lights, particle system. You have a very simple kind of thing. You probably get throwing some text uh, right in front of the camera that could look really cool maybe if it glows or something like that but other than that that is pretty much the basis of that uh, initial visualizer I made these things take a lot of time I'm just gonna switch over real quick these things take a lot of time so please 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 be patient with yourself um, like always you know one thank you if you stuck around this long I know I'm still learning blender and in terms of explaining these things it is a big lesson for me as well but huge thank you for sticking around if you have any questions or anything like that feel free to let me know um, I'll try my best to get back to you and hopefully I can do some more of this stuff as I learn more and more a lot of this is practice for me as well so many blessings thank you again um, I hope to see you around.